Okay, welcome everyone um, to today's online workshop from learn.wordpress.org. Um, this is a guide to open source and WordPress. So welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Um, in today's workshop, we'll be talking about open source and WordPress. So specifically, we'll be going over the principles of open source and free software, um, what the GPL software license is and what it provides. And finally, why WordPress is an open source project and how this is important for both the users of WordPress and the contributors to WordPress. Uh, there's a lot to talk about in relation to, to this subject. So my goal is to keep this discussion to an hour or less. So that said, here's what we won't be talking about today. Uh, we won't be talking about installing WordPress or any support for WordPress issues. Uh, we're focusing on um, open source principles today. So let's dive in. I'm curious what folks think. Just feel free to answer in the chat. What do you think open source software is? Um, I'll give folks a minute to answer in the chat. What is your definition of what open source software is? Jerry answers open source, free to use. And Laura says resources available for free. Well, cool. those are very, those are good answers and they, they overlap here. So um, yeah, Natalia says free to use and built by volunteers and Michelle says community driven software. So according to opensource.com, um, open source software is um, software whose source code is available for anyone to view, modify, and enhance. So the term source code refers to computer instructions that are written by software developers in a programming language to manipulate the way software works. Um, so proprietary software, which is unlike open source software, is distributed in the form of executable files where the source code has been compiled such that is that it's um, encrypted for computer use without the source code being available. So um, if the source code were available without compiling and encrypting, then it would be possible to modify and study the program, uh, which is what open source software provides, which is the um, the ability to read and modify the code behind the software. So um, Word WordPress is open source software, but it is also free software, as uh, some folks has, have mentioned in the chat. Um, so let's talk about the concept of free software briefly. Um, what do you think the definition of free software is? Um, so we talked about in the chat that uh, with that, you know, we think that open source means free software, but interestingly, it's a separate but overlapping thing. So what do you think the, the definition of free software is? Feel free to um, share in the chat. Uh, Jerry mentions the platform is free. However, there can be purchasable and add-ins such as plugins, themes, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All righty. Well, I'll go ahead and move forward. So as this quote from opensource.com says, the term free, and I'm putting that in air quotes, <laughs> in um, free open source software refers to freedom and not the monetary cost. So the term um, that you may have heard freeware is generally used to describe software without a cost. So um, there's a common misconception that the idea of free and open source software means that the software is free in price. So the term free in um, free open source software refers to freedom and not monetary cost. So though most free open source software is indeed free in price, uh, the term uh, free 
is referring to the freedom to use the software and source code as you please. As long as you attribute the copyright to the person or group that created the software and the software will stay free and open source when it's distributed to others. Um, yeah, Jerry, Jerry also mentions in the chat, another thought is the software is free. However, you still pay for hosting domains, et cetera. That's correct. Um, so I do have another link here uh, for a more detailed definition of open source um, at opensource.org. You can check that out when you have a chance. So more on free software. Um, free software refers to software that complies to the four essential freedoms. To use, study, modify, and distribute software for any purpose without any legal restraints. So these are the four essential freedoms of free software. Um, so number one, the freedom to run the program as you wish for any purpose, the freedom to study how the program works and change it so it does your computing as you wish. Um, access to the source code is a precondition for this. Um, number three, the freedom to uh, redistribute copies of the software so you can help your neighbor and Finally, the freedom to distribute copies of your modified version of the software to others. So by doing this, you can give the whole community a chance to benefit from your changes. Um, access to the source code is a precondition for this. Um, and uh, so for more information about the very clear idea of the differences between free software and open source software, um, you can check out this link that I'm sharing in the chat. Um, there you go. And so how do the four freedoms relate to WordPress? Um, what do these four freedoms look like in WordPress? Um, so WordPress is software licensed under the general public license, which will often be heard shortened to uh, GPL. Um, so this license provides the user with the four core freedoms. Um, so the first uh, freedom, which is the freedom to run, um, WordPress can be run by anyone for any purpose. Number two, the freedom to study. Uh, anyone can study any aspect of the WordPress code. Number three, the freedom to copy and share, uh, which means WordPress can be downloaded, downloaded and shared with and by anyone. Freedom four, the freedom to modify would be anyone um, is able to download and modify WordPress and distribute modified copies. Any work that's derived from um, the core WordPress software or requires the core software to run, such as plugins or themes, uh, these inherit the GPL license. WordPress derivatives um, can only be distributed under the same terms as WordPress itself. If a WordPress plugin or theme author doesn't license their software as GPL, they're limiting the rights of every WordPress user that uses their product, which in turn um, also breaks the WordPress license. Um, people or companies that don't embrace the WordPress license and protect the WordPress trademark are not eligible to organize, speak at, volunteer at, or sponsor any official WordPress events. So when we refer to official WordPress events, we're talking about uh, WordPress um, meetups and Word, Word camps. Um, so we always make sure that folks that are contributing to the project um, uh, are aligned with the GPL. So more on the GPL. All right, so the, the four freedoms that we just talked about, these are codified into the software. Um, which is called the GPL. So the GPL is what is referred to as a copyleft license, which is in contrast to uh, the term copyright, since uh, it flips the terms of the copyright um, onto the software. So this means that uh, derived works can only be distributed under the same license terms. Uh, the license was originally written in 1989 by the Free Software Foundation and is the founding license for all open source software. Its goal is to protect the four fundamental freedoms that are considered the foundation of free software. And rather than restrict 
distribution. The GPL is used to specify the ownership of the source code and the terms upon which it may be shared. If you take a piece of software that's, um, that's licensed under the GPL and you make a derivative work of it, um, as I mentioned, derivatives would be like plugins and themes. Um, so you'll need to make sure that your version is also licensed under the GPL. Uh, this is important because if you don't honor the GPL, the license to use the source program will terminate and it would breach the terms of usage. But the good news is that the GPL makes it possible to create new projects uh, based on existing ones, as long as you stick to the same license. Uh, there have been a few different versions of the GPL over the years, but the one that WordPress, is, WordPress uses is called GPL v2 or later um, from the Free Software Foundation. So if a derivative work of GPL licensed software like WordPress is um, distributed in the original or modified form, it needs to be licensed under the, uh, the um, sorry, I lost my place there. Uh, the licensees, the source program will terminate and it will breach the terms of usage, as I mentioned. Um, so this makes it possible to, um, to fork the open source software project into a new project. Um, as long as the new project is under the same license. So if you haven't heard, you haven't heard the term fork before um, in relation to software, this means to take the source code from uh, an open source software program and develop an entirely new program. Um, alrighty. Um, so as I mentioned, WordPress is licensed under uh, GPL v2. Um, and this is included, the software, uh, the copy of this license is included with every copy of WordPress, but you can also um, read the full text of the license at this link that I've just provided in the chat. Ooh, that was a lot, wasn't it? Any questions so far? Let me take a look at the chat here. All right, not so far. All right, still with me? <laughs> All right, so you might be wondering, is there a difference between open source software and free software? Um, so open source software is characterized by public accessibility of its code, while free software focuses on the capabilities for using and sharing the software. So these terms overlap somewhat, um, but they're not interchangeable. So you'll see in the middle, they're overlapping to um, what you see here is FOSS or FOSS. Um, so the capabilities and conditions given to software users depends um, upon the particular software license involved. And there are variations on the licenses used for open source and free software. So the additional terms, um, there are some additional terms for describing these overlapping ideologies for software projects. So which, for example, FOSS, FOSS, which is free and open source software. And you might see around uh, FLOSS, F-L-O-S-S. -S. So that stands for free um, slash Libre, L-I-B-R-E, which means no cost, um, open source software. I see a question from Jerry in the chat. Is this how companies such as Elegant Themes, um, Divi, can sell access to their products even though they, they, are, they are under GPL? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. We do go over um, how folks make money with WordPress a little, a little bit later, but to answer this question briefly, um, when folks sell like premium themes, they often have a free version of uh, that theme or plugin um, and the like the premium version gives uh, you like support and updates um, uh, like guaranteed support like uh, access to support um, after that after you pay for the premium version um, but again we'll talk more about that later so thanks for the question all right, so moving forward with the principles of open source software. Um, so these principles are described in this book that you see here that's called The Cathedral and the Bazaar by Eric Raymond. Um, there is a free version of this book online. So um, you know, if you like paper books, you feel free to order one, but there, here is a version online. Um, so I shared a link in the chat to um, a copy of this book. 
So in this book, um, Raymond talks about the rise and growth of, open, of the open source software movement. Um, so it primarily focuses on the Linux project. Uh, Linux was one of the first efforts that provided, uh, that proved, excuse me, that the shift in approach to software development could not only work, but even work better than closed source methods um, that usually result in proprietary software. So he contrasts these different approaches to software development by describing them as the cathedral and the bazaar. So the idea is to uh, look at traditional closed source software as a cathedral a sky, or even a, a skyscraper or any privately built elaborate architecture. Um, open source software is looked at as a bazaar or a marketplace. So in the cathedral approach, software is built by a group of developers working in isolation that are focused on a central plan. They code, find bugs, and fix as much as possible as part of a closed or private team. And then you know, maybe after a year or so, they eventually ship the product, and, which is much like building a cathedral where everything is carefully crafted and installed before the doors open. Um, this closed source method of development depends strongly on the skill and determination of the small group of developers. And on the other hand, the open source method, which um, we refer to as the bazaar here, uh, this turns the idea upside down. So instead of asking a few developers to work in private, open source development opens up the software's imperfect source code and accepts contributions, which would include bug reports, bug fixes, uh, feature requests, et cetera. Um, so we would accept those contributions from anyone who's interested and capable. So it's kind of like a bazaar um, or as by modern standards, that would be like a farmer's market or a fair, kind of like you see in this photo here. Um, and everyone brings what they're best at and contributes to a living, thriving ecosystem. So based on conventional wisdom, open source development shouldn't work. It should be a mess of diverse agendas and approaches and lots of voices that don't necessarily agree. But open source does work as WordPress proves. Um, so let's go over each of the principles of open source. Um, Alex in the chat mentions uh, Working in Public by Nadia Igbal. I hope I said that right. <laughs> um, that's another resource uh, for those interested. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I'll, I'll check that out. All right, so the first principle of open source. Um, this is, with many eyes, all bugs are shallow. Um, another way to say this is, that the more people using the software in different ways are reviewing it, the more problems will be that will be found rapidly so they can be fixed. Um, open source depends on that large group of vocal users uh, because the project can rely on many eyes. One person can report a problem and someone else can suggest or provide a fix. Um, a third person or a set of people can test the fix and give feedback. And so with a large number of people using, testing, and fixing the product, improvements happen more quickly and benefit a broader set of users. The more perspectives and use cases you have on a project um, or a product, the more bugs you can find and fix, and the better features you can design. So as Eric Raymond says, and I quote, the next best thing to having good ideas is recognizing good ideas from your users. Um, a large contributor base will also mean that if someone loses interest in working on something, it's possible and more likely that other motivated people will step up to work on it. To get the highest quality observations and contributions from your user base, um, it, a software project must make it easy to access its source code and be transparent about progress and challenges. If people can't read the source code, they won't understand why the program does something in a certain way, and they won't be able to suggest better methods or install bug fixes. And next, the next principle, release early, release often. So with a, an active community of vocal and engaged users, those users will suggest changes or tell you about new features that they need. And hopefully they'll provide patches and help test them. 
Um, quick responsive iterations means that contributors feel more satisfied and successful and keeps them coming back to help. Um, engaged contributors are more likely to get involved in more complex and riskier projects. Contributors will respond when they're engaged and they're engaged when they see that their contribution is valued. So accepting contributions, even small ones, from as many people as possible will mean that many more people will fe feel invested in the community and they're more likely to contribute again. Put another way, um, volunteers are paid in gratitude, so I'll say paid in air quotes, <laughs> um, in gratitude and influence. Um, so the more often you create opportunities for quick iterations that respond to your contributor base, the more contributions you're likely to gather. All right, the next principle is scratching a personal itch. <laughs> That's a very evocative um, statement. Um, and I think we all understand what that means <laughs> which is by, just by reading it. Um, so this uh, principle is actually was considered the first lesson in the book. So this, which it says in the book that every good work of software starts by scratching a developer's personal itch. Um, because contributions to open source projects are usually volunteer work, contributors are usually driven by some personal reason to work on a bug or a feature. So this usually results in a developer or other kind of volunteer who approaches the problem with a strong motivation and a passion for solving it, plus um, their personal experience, um, which informs their direction and creates, and creates empathy for the end users of the feature or program. Um, so this principle can turn the world's most effective, um, can turn into the world's most effective recruiting tool if the project avoids perfection and communicates transparently enough. Um, drawing attention to where the program needs improvements and showing the impact that those improvements might have can make recruiting contributors even easier. So you'll notice that a lot of folks in open source, um, well, specifically in WordPress, uh, you may have noticed that we um, we all work in the public. We work um, in, um, you know, we post on public blogs and talk in a public Slack instance. So you know, folks can see the work that's being done. That way they can hop in where um, they feel like they can share their expertise. So simply put with this principle, um, folks can't help fix it unless they know it's broken. And the final principle, um, last but not least, is egoless participation. Uh, because open source depends on transparency and participation, product leadership and contributors must both work in an egoless environment. So the term egoless was coined by uh, Eric Raymond to mean without ego or without an exaggerated sense of self-importance. The project's knowledge base can only grow through transparency and all contributions are made to benefit the overall project and not any one person or business in particular. If the project is to iterate quickly, then no one could be territorial about their code. Um, as a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. If people are encouraged to look for bugs and potential improvements in a project, then the project naturally improves that much faster. Uh, Raymond comments in the book that bug hunting and criticism are always project labeled, not person labeled. Uh, Raymond further observes that in open source communities, boasting or self-importance is suppressed because it behaves like noise, tending to corrupt the vital signals from experiments in creative and cooperative behavior. In an open source community, one's work is one statement. Authority in the community arises through high quality contributions that have a broad impact, um, which is what we call in WordPress a duocracy. <laughs> uh, within this context, it's important to remember that removing a person's name from a project history, credits, or maintainer list is absolutely not done without the person's explicit consent. Um, another important idea that's packed into this concept is that of leadership, but no one leader. 
So this flat leadership structure in open source allows for more contributors to show leadership and for our project to iterate more quickly. Uh, rejecting ego-driven self-promotional behavior also serves to build trust um, amongst the contributor community. Often open source projects will bring people together from different parts of the world and vastly different lived experiences. Uh, when you all have it um, in common is your interest in building or improving a collective project, the willingness to collaborate will frequently depend on the belief that your fellow contributors share the same priorities. And that was the four principles of open source. Um, just want to check if we have any comments or questions in the chat. Um, none so far already. So why? Why choose open source? Um, as an end user, developer, or business manager, why should one consider whether or not to use open source software? So some of the key factors. Um, there is typically little cost, um, although some projects may add a small distribution fee. There is no contractual license, um, so instead the license outlines the rules for sharing. The software is customizable, and public forums and documentation support that. There is no vendor lock-in for customization and bug fixes. Um, abandoned software projects can be adopted by new development teams. Um, actually, WordPress is an example of that. <laughs> um, open standards are typically employed rather than uh, proprietary standards. Um, and bugs and security issues can be quickly resolved with software patches. Um, so today, some of the most uh, popular applications in the world are op open source software. So um, Android, uh, Mozilla Firefox, LibreOffice, uh, Git, and of course, WordPress. Uh, the WordPress open source project is maintained and advanced by a global community of volunteer contributors. So these contributors bring an incredible variety of experience and skills to this effort. Some contributors are sponsored by companies that built their businesses on WordPress, and many more are independent users who WordPress, use WordPress uh, for any reason whatsoever. Um, it's not necessary to be a software developer, though, if um, you want to contribute to WordPress, um, although development of, is, of course, an important role. Um, there are many other ways that any person can contribute to the project by assisting in support forums, um, writing or editing documentation, um, making language translations, um, helping with uh, WordPress meetups or WordCamps, and even online workshops like these, like the one that you're in right now. Uh, these are all valid contributions to the WordPress open source project. So to learn about various teams working on WordPress and how to get involved, uh, you can go to make.wordpress.org. There are, I think to this date, 21 different teams for all sorts of uh, skills and talents. Um, and I hope you could find some way to give back to WordPress uh, with one of these teams. Uh, so the WordPress ecosystem includes anyone who uses or builds WordPress in any way. Um, this includes not just the open source contributors, but also bloggers, web agencies, hosting companies, freelancers, companies that sell plugins or themes, community organizers, designers, small business owners, nonprofits, webmasters, site builders, security companies. I mean, the list just goes on and on, but of course you are all a part of it. Annalise Mint asks, didn't GPL used to mean a new public license? Yes, that's correct. I know it does sound a little redundant to say GPL license, doesn't it? Uh, I see that uh, said a lot. So a frequently asked question is, how do people make money with WordPress? The WordPress software itself has become a tool used across the world by a wide range of users. So its ecosystem also includes a booming economy of WordPress-based businesses, which include software as a service, um, classes, 
web hosting, site building, security, and other tools like premium plugins and themes, um, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, Jerry asks in the chat, how would you counter that the idea that GPL might be considered out of date? It's a solid manifesto, but others try to monetize everything. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not sure when was the last time the GPL was updated, but um, the, I don't know, my personal thoughts on that is that it's a good basis um, and it's true people try to monetize everything because we you know we have to support our ourselves um, so as long as uh, you know as mentioned earlier as long as any derivative works honor the gpl you can find ways to 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 make money like you know selling premium themes premium plugins um, and I think it was mentioned earlier in the chat about selling hosting, um, selling security software. Oh, thank you, Alex. GPL3 was written in 2007. Yeah, I actually, I don't know if I've um, heard of, uh, directly heard the idea that the GPL was considered out of date. I'd like to, like to hear more about that. So if you have any resources um, that I could review, I, I'd love to read about that. Uh, speaking of resources, I have a lot of resources because we've gone over a lot in this session. Um, so I will be sharing these uh, a copy of these slides um, after our session. Uh, I'll share it in the meetup group. Also share it alongside the recording on WordPress.tv. So um, that way you can peruse these links at your convenience. So I wanted to call out the last link um, that's listed here. Uh, Learn WordPress has a course on open source basics in WordPress, so you can test your knowledge about open source. So that's a good one to go over after this session or after you review, review the rest of um, the resources that we've shared today. Um, I'll go ahead and just share that link because the rest of these uh, links are largely what I had shared earlier in the presentation. I just wanted to have a complete list here. And as I mentioned at the beginning, um, I'd love for folks to keep in touch. Um, so you can join the WordPress Slack uh, at chat.wordpress.org. Uh, note that you have to have a, an account on wordpress.org, which is of course free to create. Um, and then there's a channel in that Slack called training. Uh, that is where the training team, um, including myself, we do our work on the resources at learn.wordpress.org. Um, you can connect with me on Mastodon or Twitter. I've provided um, my usernames there. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, get in touch if you're interested in, in contributing to learn, pre learn WordPress. But um, if you're interested in contributing to the WordPress project at all, um, please feel free to reach out with your questions. Um, I've been a full-time contributor to the project since 2016. Um, and know a little bit about uh, contributing. So yeah, feel free to, to connect. Um, so with the training team, uh, you can help with online workshops like these. You don't necessarily have to present if you're not comfortable, um, but you can contribute to editing the content, um, editing slash reviewing the content. You can co-host uh, an online workshop. Um, I know Laura, who's here with us today, she has uh, been a co-host a few times, more than a few times, really. Um, you can help behind the scenes with um, you know, helping um, us progress our goals. Um, so let's see, I think that's it for content. Um, I wanted to thank you all for learning with us today. Um, if you want to learn more, and we have more online workshops and some video tutorials at learn.wordpress.org. Um, so I wanted to check the chat. Um, yeah, Jerry mentions you're a newbie and really trying to learn WordPress. Um, you can install it and create rudimentary pages, but overall it can be a bit daunting to absorb and understand everything. Yes, 
<laughs> we hope to, uh, with our resources at Learn WordPress, uh, we hope to make that a little less daunting. Um, if there's any particular subjects uh, that you would like to learn about related to WordPress, Jerry, I'm sure you can find that on Learn WordPress. But um, if you'd like to see um, another like workshop or tutorial on a particular thing in WordPress, please let us know or let me know. <laughs> Um, Alex asks, if we are interested in contributing to the WordPress project, what's a good way to get started or involved? Um, that depends on your interests and skills. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, one of the easiest no-code ways to get involved with WordPress is to get involved with the community team. So the community team um, oversees like WordPress events, uh, like WordPress meetups and WordCamps. Um, and does a lot of outreach to folks. Um, another no-code way is getting involved with the training team, like, like we're doing today. Um, workshops, reviewing content, um, uh, reviewing slash editing content is an easy way. Um, Laura mentions that, yeah, she started as a co-host for, for the training team. Um, another way is taking notes for a training team meeting and any of the teams if they do take notes at their, at their meetings. That's a good way to get to know um, the work that a particular team is doing. Uh, you can also review lesson plans, as Laura mentions. Um, oh yeah, submitting photo to the photo directory. I keep forgetting about the photo team because they're fairly new. Um, if you're interested in photography, um, you can submit photos to the photo directory. Um, and yeah, Laura provided a link there. Perfect, yes. Um, I think that's it. Um, Alex, if um, was there a particular uh, like skill that you would like to contribute to the project or um, again, like what do you do with WordPress that you would like to um, contribute to? Probably code. Yeah, so like maybe the the core team. So like attending the, the core team meetings in, um, in Slack, because I think they, they purely just do those on Slack. Just sit in on them, see what, uh, see what happens, uh, what they talk about during these meetings. So yeah, make.wordpress.org. You can learn about the all the different teams. Um, working with headless WordPress and want to make sure our use of WordPress is represented too. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, scratching your scratching your personal itch. And if you're a plugin developer or you're interested in developing plugins, you can contribute to the plugins theme. Um, so Laura mentions the Triad Meetup where you're doing an overview of 6.2. Yes. Yeah, join your local WordPress meetup. There are, I don't know, last I checked, it was like over 800 WordPress meetups worldwide. So you're likely to find some uh, a meetup group that is close to you. A lot of them are still doing um, meetups online like this, um, but it's, uh, I would say actually that's the easiest way to, to get involved. Just attend your local WordPress meetup, um, see what folks are talking about. And um, you know sometimes you'll have an opportunity to contribute. Some meetups will do standalone like contributor days where you contribute to a particular team. Um, but yeah, getting involved to your local community is something I highly recommend. All right, folks, if we have no other questions or comments, um, we will wrap up for this session. Um, I will be doing this session again in um, many hours, <laughs> closer to the end of my day, to hit another time zone. Um, so you're welcome to join that as well. Um, or let your folks um, know on the other side of the world so that they can join. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, for answering Natalia's question. I just missed that. Yeah. Who contribute with code. Yes, yeah, a bit scary. It's, a, it's intimidating for sure. <laughs> To get to know the the, um, the community, I would say if you're more comfortable um, 
with non-technical contributions, uh, that's a good way to just get your foot in the door and um, feel, get a feeling for the community. And yeah, you can always try out different teams. Uh, there's no rule that like once you commit to contributing one team that you're stuck with it. Um, you, we always welcome folks to hop around. Uh, I personally started with the community team. I'm now uh, with the training team primarily. Um, I've also contributed to um, the TV team, which puts all, uh, all the these videos online. Um, we've contributed, mm, I guess, briefly. To, it's on my WordPress.org profile that I've contributed to the core team, even though I'm not a coder. I, I helped with... Um, with the development of uh, a plugin that was on the repo. So um, they put my name on that plugin and made me a, um, a plugin and core contributor. This is really good advice from Laura to join and observe. Um, and when you get more comfortable, start contributing more. So that's really great advice. Um, yeah, I'm also the kind of person that likes to like observe for a little while and then to try to understand where I'd fit in. So yes, I agree with you, Laura. All right, I think that might be it. Um, again, keep in touch um, and we'll see you at another workshop soon. Thank you all for being here.